All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. One of the biggest problems with modern life is we simply have too much choice. I mean, don't get me wrong, a bit of choice is good, it's healthy, but too much just has the opposite effect. It stops us in our tracks and we become ponderous oafs. Too much choice is why there's always a big queue outside Costa Coffee, because people can't decide which kind of coffee bean they like or which type of milk they require. It's frankly just marketing nonsense designed to make us feel important and decisive. And we're not really. We're quite simple creatures with very basic desires. We're like cattle, but with iPhones. Last week I was driving past the shops on my way home and suddenly remembered that I needed some shampoo. So I parked my car on the double yellow lines outside and thought I'd just nip into Superdrug, choose between three or four different models and then come back out again, all within under 60 seconds. But there weren't just three or four different models to choose from. There was an entire aisle. Did I want my shampoo to contain argan oil or tea tree? Did I have a dry scalp or a greasy scalp? Did I want it to smell of lemons or pomegranate? And while we're at it, what the hell's a split end? Whilst I was trying to make my selection, I knew very well that my car was outside getting booked by somebody who was probably bullied at school. All I wanted was a simple white bottle with the word shampoo written on it in Times New Roman. And that doesn't exist. In the end, I decided to go with one which Joe Hart recommended. So presumably my career will soon be over and I'll have to move to Burnley. Sorry, Joe, couldn't resist. You might be wondering what my ramblings about shampoo have got to do with today's test car. Well, believe me, they're very relevant because today I'm in a white SUV with the word SUV written on it in Times New Roman. It's this 2016 Dacia Duster. It's a car for people who aren't interested in cars. I know I shouldn't like this kind of car, but I do. Let me explain. If you want a crossover or small SUV these days, as everybody does, there is a bewildering amount of choice. Do you want something French, German, Japanese or Korean? Do you want it two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Do you want it to look rugged and chunky? You could spend years test driving all the options, reading all the reviews, watching all the videos, and that, frankly, is time wasted because they're all the same. You might as well go out and buy the cheapest one you can find. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is this Dacia Duster. Let me give you a little bit of background about the company. Dacia is a Romanian brand that's been around since the 1960s. In recent years, it's been bought out entirely by the French. It's now owned by Renault. They only really made their way into Western Europe in 2004 with the Dacia Logan and later the Sandero. But they quickly made a name for themselves with their no frills, no nonsense cars. The Duster has been around since 2010 but it didn't make its way to the UK until 2013. It was offered as a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive, and there were a whole host of different engines. So you could go with a 1.2-litre turbo petrol, a 1.6-litre naturally aspirated petrol, or a 1.5-litre turbo diesel. The 1.5-litre turbo diesel was the same engine that was featured in last week's video car, the Mercedes A-Class. And none of them are class leading, but they all do a reasonable job. Today I'm in the 1.6 litre four cylinder petrol engine, which produces around 115 horsepower. And it's not quick, as you might have guessed, but it's all right. This one uses a five speed manual gearbox, which is a little bit annoying on the motorway because you'd like that extra gear just to make it a little bit quieter. But if you opted for the 1.2 or the 1.5, they got six speed manuals. If you don't do many miles, the petrol's definitely the one to go for, but if you do, then I would opt for the diesel. Shall we talk about the exterior styling for a second? In fact, let me know below in the comments what you think of it, but I think it looks good. It looks stocky and stout. I like the roof bars and the chunky bumpers. It's just got that go anywhere vibe about it. The range starts with the very basic access model where you get four wheels and some seats. If you spend a little bit extra and go with the ambience, then you get things like a 60-40 split fold in rear seat setup, a USB point on your stereo, things which you or I might take for granted in any other car only are available on that ambience model. If you spend extra still, you can go for the high-spec Laureate where you get things like a leather steering wheel and electric mirrors. But by the time you spend that sort of money, you could have bought something better entirely. So it would be my, my advice to stick to the access or the ambience. Lower spec models like this don't even have alloy wheels. They have these steels. I found that the two wheel drive models are nicer to drive than the four wheel drive because I just find the gearing a little bit strange in the four wheel drives. They're quite easy to stall. They're very cheap to buy and run. Fuel economy across the range is impressive. If you go for a diesel, you'll do 50 miles per gallon wherever you go. Even the petrols will do in excess of 40 miles per gallon wherever you go. So yeah, they're cheap to run. So let's talk about the interior. It's what the phrase cheap and cheerful was designed for, apart from the fact it's not very cheerful. It is cheap though. You get a plastic steering wheel, plastic dash, everything feels very cheap. 
but it doesn't feel flimsy. It just feels washable and wipeable. It'd make a great family car, this, if your children were particularly scruffy. I just think at this price point, you can't complain too much about interior quality. It would be like flying Ryanair and then complaining about the customer service. You know what you're getting yourself into. On this ambience model, you get a CD player with controls here just behind the steering wheel. You also get somewhere to plug in your USB or your auxiliary input. You get electric windows in the front, but not in the back. And you get manual mirrors. It does feel very mid-2000s Renault inside, but thankfully without one of those silly credit card keys which always break into a million pieces. It really is no frills motor in this. And if that's what you're after, I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't buy one. Overall, the seats are quite comfortable and quite padded, and it rides very well. The steering's quite light, it's not too challenging. On the whole, the soundproofing and stuff isn't the best, so you do hear quite a bit of engine noise and wind and road noise, but it's not excessive. You do get the sense that it was made for more developing countries in the former third world. So it does deal with even the roughest roads quite well. It takes even the biggest potholes in its stride. So what's it like to drive? Well, it's just as you might imagine, really. It just drives like a car. It is no frills motoring. But there are really no surprises with it, either pleasant nor unpleasant. You never mistake it for being a sophisticated car, which it isn't. So you never feel deceived by it. As you approach it and you see the steel wheels and its non-colour keyed door handles, you know what to expect. There's something quite communistic about a very cheap, very basic car that's built for the masses. And in all honesty, that goes against everything I believe in. But I have to admit, I quite like the idea of something that's just a tool to do a job. Something that you can rough up a little bit. Something that you don't care about. Something that you can park anywhere. It doesn't matter if you come back out to it and somebody's opened the door onto it. Or caught the bumper corner as they drove off. It doesn't matter. I think if I still lived in Spain, this would be the ideal car to have. The driving over there is abysmal, so it wouldn't matter if Juan or Juanita bumped into you. Who cares? I think that's one of the reasons you see so many of these on the continent. Generally, Europeans, especially Mediterranean Europeans, prefer to spend their finite time and money on this planet with the loved ones enjoying themselves, rather than on some piece of metal with four wheels. Overall, the Dacia Duster reminds me of the late Skoda Yeti, RIP. It almost feels like a mule, something that you could just throw your dogs in the back of. Doesn't really matter if they make a mess or chew the headrests. And then, off you drive into the sunset. It feels very tough and utilitarian. Whenever I've been to North Africa or Turkey, you see lots of these on the road. And it's no surprise. When this car was released, lots of journalists complained that unless you go for a top-spec Laureate model, you don't even get air conditioning. But in Britain, that's not really an issue. It's always six degrees and drizzly. Aircon's not really a problem. Practicality is really where the duster shines. It's one of the most practical cars in its class. The boot is very spacious. It offers 475 litres of space. And although this car's only a five-seater, there is enough space in it for five adults. There's also plenty of head and leg room. Used prices here in the UK start at around £3,500. That will get you a 2013 with about 100,000 miles on the clock. For one like this, a 2016 with only 26,000 miles on the clock, expect to spend somewhere between six and seven thousand pounds. I just think that's such a bargain for such a modern car. Reliability-wise, I know you're buying a car which has been cobbled together in a factory in Romania using bits of old Renault, so you might not expect it to be the most reliable car, but they're just so basic, there's very little to go wrong with it. The engines and gearboxes are tried and tested. Usually the Achilles heel with Renaults is the electronics. And, well, this car just doesn't have that many of them. You've got to remember how basic they are. The fundamentals aren't complicated, so there's very little to go wrong. I just think if you buy any other small crossover vehicle, it tells the world that you're hopeless and henpecked. you spent more money for literally nothing at all. Whereas if you buy a Dacia Duster, I think it announces to the world that you're quite savvy with money, and you'd rather spend your time with your family and loved ones. On paper, at least, I ought to hate this car and everything it represents, but I don't. It just comes across as being very honest and trustworthy and simple. You get just enough essential parts, and there's something quite likeable about that. So thank you once again for watching. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, or perhaps expanding your own used car business, check out my online course. I'll leave the link below. It features nearly 100 videos which will help you start and expand your used car business. And they're all available on a very user-friendly online portal. You can even download them as an MP3 file and just treat it as any other audiobook. So check it out, I'll leave the link below. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below for that as well. 
And yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.